Good morning and welcome to St. John's for the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. And we will begin today's service with the hymn number 408, Sing Praise to God, All Verses Thereof. Today we're doing right two, beginning on page 355 of your Book of Common Prayer, that red book in front of you. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are, are open, all desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me as we say the Gloria uh, on the next page. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Amos. 
Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take for them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live, and so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the, that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the book of Psalms. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. O oh Lord, how long will you cherish the graces of your servant? Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning so that we may, so that we shall rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us, and the years in which we suffered the persecution. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands, prosper our hands. A reading from the epistle to the Hebrews. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord. Thank you. The sequence hymn before the gospel is hymn number 605, all verses.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go. Sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Lord, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields, with persecutions, and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Let's face it. Whatever our individual net worth, we all here in the northwest corner live in a land of abundance. There's no one here today who could, with any accuracy, be called truly poor as many in other parts of the world certainly are. So maybe the gospel we've just heard might feel particularly appropriate for folks like us. It tells a story that appears in all three of the gospels that seem to tell many of the same stories with only slight variations among them. Those gospels, of course, are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Mark's gospel tells of a man about whom we hear only that he's young. In the other two, he's described either as rich or or even as a ruler. In any event, this man throws himself at Jesus' feet to ask what he must do to inherit eternal life. He tells Jesus that he has been obeying the Jewish commandments since he was a kid. Isn't that sufficient? Alas, it's not, Jesus tells him. Jesus' explanation might make us feel just a bit uncomfortable, I might think. There's one more little thing, he tells him, that he must do if he wants to inherit eternal life. Give all his wealth to the poor. Heck, as Jesus puts it later, not only should he give it all, all away all his possessions, but apparently he should also leave his family behind 
and have essentially become Jesus' 13th apostle. Well, we'd all like eternal life, wouldn't we? So how about it? Are any of us ready to give up everything we have and become missionaries for Christ? Jesus tells us that if we do that, we'll get a hundredfold in return. And although there will also be persecutions, we will gain eternal life. As he tells this young man, he'll have treasure in heaven. Does that phrase sound familiar, treasure in heaven? Of course it does. We read it every Ash Wednesday from Matthew's Gospel, where it says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus' advice has surely made me a bit uncomfortable. I guess I'm not ready to give away everything that I have. I'm actually reminded of a famous observation by St. Augustine. He was a notoriously profligate young man who, as he got religion, asked God to make him chaste and celibate, but not yet. I don't believe what Jesus tells the young man is necessarily to be taken as absolutely literal. I hope not, anyhow. Nevertheless, it certainly is serious. After all, Jesus reminds us, it's easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. So what are we to make of this story and the rest of today's gospel? What's so wrong with being rich? Wouldn't we all like to be rich? The lady in this following story certainly would. The story goes, a newly married man asks his wife, what, would, would, would you have married me if my father hadn't left me a fortune? Honey, the woman replied sweetly, I'd have married you no matter who left you a fortune. <laughs> okay, that's just a joke. But there really are very disparate attitudes toward money, aren't there? Let me tell you about two men with very different attitudes about wealth. There's a televangelist from Atlanta with the unlikely name of Creflo Dollar. And yes, that really is his birth name, Dollar. Tells you something about getting into the business that your name signifies, like being a carpenter if you're a carpenter, for example, or, well, whatever. But anyhow, he, he, he's a proponent, as you might suspect, of the prosperity gospel. Did ever name lead? Oh, well. You know the tenet of the prosperity gospel. God wants you to be rich. Well, a few years ago, the Reverend Dollar asked his congregation of something like 200,000 people, depending upon how you count and where you count and whether you're talking about in the sanctuary or whether you're talking about his very broad uh, television crowd, to chip in $300 each to pay for a Gulfstream G650 jet for him. He explained the need for the $65 million jet in a five-minute video posted on the Creflo Dollar Ministries website. In the video, he explained he needed a new jet to replace a 30-year-old one that had, was no longer operable. In addition to the jet, he also reportedly owns two Rolls Royces, a million-dollar home in Atlanta, a two-and-a-half million-dollar home in New Jersey, and a home in Manhattan that he sold in 2012 for three and three-quarter million. Now, that's a man of God who's doing pretty well with his ministry, a ministry devoted to encouraging his rather large flock toward lives of greater riches for themselves and, oh, of course, for himself as well. On the other hand, there's the story of Chuck Feeney. Born in 1931, in the 1950s, it was Feeney who started the business wherein items might be sold to shoppers duty-free. 
you've ever been in an airport, surely you've seen those shops. Eventually, he established an organization called the Duty Free Shoppers Group, abbreviated to DFS. To say that his idea was a success is something of an understatement. In 1982, Feeney created a nonprofit foundation called the Atlantic Philanthropies. And in 1984, he secretly transferred his entire stake of approximately 39% in the Duty Free Shoppers Group, then worth about $500 million, to the foundation. Not even his business partners knew he no longer personally owned any part of DFS. But Feeney's story doesn't end there. Since the foundation continued through the years to make more money, by the time he closed it down last year, it had distributed a total of more than $8 billion in charitable donations. Now, to be honest, Feeney wasn't left literally penniless. He still, he still had a $2 million nest egg. But since he rents an apartment in San Francisco, one of the most expensive cities in America, that's frankly probably barely enough to last until he dies. Until he was 75, when he flew anywhere, he traveled only in coach and carried reading materials in a plastic bag. He doesn't own a car or, or a house and wears a watch worth $10. So what attitude ought we ourselves take toward wealth? One of the spiritual masters of Christianity who has in recent years developed a devoted following because of his insights, is the medieval theologian whom I've quoted often before, Meister Eckhart. If we are perplexed by today's gospel, perhaps this insight of, of Eckhart's might be helpful. And so, he writes, I tell you that we should learn to see God in all gifts and works, neither resting content with anything nor becoming attached to anything. For us, there can be no attachment to a particular manner of behavior in this life. Nor has this ever been right, however successful we may have been. It's not wealth then, but attachment to wealth that makes it difficult for the rich to make it to eternal life. Their treasure, or at least their attachment to their treasure, is here on earth. We do well to remember the line from the first book of Chronicles, a variation of which we often hear in church at the time of a Sunday collection. Well, who knows? Maybe, perhaps, maybe a time will come when we'll be able to have that happen once again. For all things, it says, for all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. If we can't lay aside our devotion to our possessions, which this line suggests we really only have on loan to us anyway, how can we then be truly ready for life in God's kingdom? Can we let go? Can we be free of our possessions? Can we covet fewer of them for ourselves? You know, there have been some people, even in Jesus' world, who, who have believed that the more wealth they have, the more God is obviously favoring them. But the question for us today, especially whenever we read stories or see photos of children living lives of abject poverty in third world countries, or suffering from the ravages of war in places like Syria or Yemen, whether we don't ourselves look at the life that we've been favored to be able to live and at some level, even if perhaps subconscious, not thank God for his favor to us. So I guess then we're left in the same quandary as the disciples. If we take Jesus' advice literally, we're doomed, aren't we? Remember, though, that Jesus also made one of the statements that have formed the basis for Protestant theology ever since Luther's insight centuries ago. We simply can't earn our way into heaven by giving away everything that we own. 
His reassurance is that for mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. We aren't saved by what we do, to be sure, but by the gift of God, for which we ought all of us to give thanks. Though that fact doesn't mean that we shouldn't also love those possessions less for what they can do for us and more for what they might be able to do for others. Furthermore, since we can now attribute salvation to God, not to what we must do to earn our way to heaven, why not show our thanks by doing what we can to carry out Jesus' injunction to love God and our neighbor? Recognizing the lesson of the story of the Good Samaritan that everyone is truly our neighbor. No matter whether they come to this church, as we do, or live on the other side of the globe, we may not need to help others to work our way to heaven. Rather, it's simply what we ought to do. And if we do act that way, we do it, of course, with God's help and approval, of course. Amen. Now, standing, if you turn to page 358, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You have a handout that is called some prayers of the people in the time of the pandemic. We are going to use those today. Protect those throughout the world who are suffering from harm or in danger of suffering harm at the hands of others, and likewise soften the hearts of those who would do such harm that the desire to live in peace and harmony with all others may prevail. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, you suffered at human hands the pain of false arrest, torture, and unjust punishment, and you commanded us to comfort those in prison. 
Build a fire in your people, Lord, that we may never learn to be patient with prejudice or make peace with oppression, but that we may burn with zeal for justice and equal protections under the law for all people. In the name of him who was unjustly condemned to death, Lord, in your mercy. Grant to all who are suffering from the ravages of the current pandemic or from any other cause the, the knowledge of where true healing is found. Heal their bodies and give peace to their minds. We pray especially for, and here you may pray for anyone in your hearts and minds who are suffering from any uh, disease or, or deprivation, either aloud or to yourself. Above all, lead all in distress into the joy bestowed upon them through Christ's resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, give rest to the exhausted minds and bodies of the workers striving valiantly to restore the health of those who suffer. Bless them and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy, Remember those who lack steady income or housing, those marginalized, unemployed, or underemployed, and who are therefore having difficulty in maintaining safe and healthy lives. Give them grace and courage, and through the concern of family, friends, and others around them, grant them the sustenance they need to carry them through their time of trouble. Lord, in your mercy, Bestow upon all the rulers of this world the insight and compassion to care more for the welfare and health of those whom their decisions may affect than their own more personal concerns, that the things of your world, not theirs, may be foremost in their minds and hearts. Lord, in your mercy. As we rejoice in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray for all who, like him, have suffered the death of their bodies, especially those in your own minds and hearts. You may want to remember them at this time. May God, who raised Christ from the grave, give them also a share in his victory over death, and in his risen life. Lord, in your mercy, our prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ, grant you in all goodness, by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Well, first things first. I, I, I am in awe of the fact that we've been able to have such beautiful music from uh, Matt and from Kathy during the last two weeks. I, I hate to see it go now. <laughs> well, it was, it's been really, truly beautiful. And then the, 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 the other really important thing to report, if you haven't already heard, is how well little David is doing, David O'Neill. Uh, he is now one month past surgery, and his entire uh, stock of, of drugs is ibuprofen. He's sitting up uh, straight. He's in very little or, or no pain, basically. Uh, he's much happier than he was, more content with life. He's going back to school soon. Uh, I mean, things have just uh, been a real turnaround in his life, and for that we all ought to be very grateful to the doctors who cared for him, and, and nurses, of course, as well. Don't leave them out. Um, what else needs to be said? What's new? Anybody have anything that really ought to be shared? Really? That's it? Ben, I see a hand. I'm sorry, say. <laughs> oh, well. Um, We're also, I'm delighted to see John Corbier here. That's another big change for the, for the better, for sure. When is your next gig? December. All right. And just in time for Pearl Harbor Day, I guess, or something. Very, very good. All right. Um, that being said, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. We have another hymn, and that. While the table is being prepared, it is hymn number 400, oh, wait a minute, uh, 700, 707, two verses only, take my life and let it be.
As a reminder, of course, we have two chalices. One is for the altar, one is for the folks who come forward to take communion. We ask that you not drink from the chalice as it is passed to you, but to dip the toast that you will be given into the wine, um, what we call intinction. We, uh, we now will turn to uh, Eucharistic Prayer A. which is found on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. There's right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Precious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. During communion, we have a communion hymn, number 472, Hope of the World, verses 1, 2, 4, and 5.
<clears throat> and now for our post-communion prayer of thanksgiving for the spiritual food which we have received here today, please turn to page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me as we say the prayer of uh, St. Richard, which is found on the wall to your right. Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, friend, and brother, help us this day and every day to see thee more clearly, to follow thee more nearly, to love thee more dearly, for thy name's sake. Amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love both this day, this week, and forevermore. Amen. The last hymn is hymn number 680, O God, Our Help in Ages Past, verses 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6.